When we wake Hear the birds and see the sun Side by side our fears are done All the good times just begun We know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy, but things are finally right With you and I, the future is bright So the day has come when we're going to be selling our beloved lamps uh, we've owned this camper for four years and in our minds it is the best boondocking camper that there is at any price, uh, new or old. Uh, we have absolutely loved this thing, but our life is taking a different course. We are going full-time RVing now, we're moving out of our house, and we decided that we just can't quite live with the size uh, and storage of Lance for full-time living and working from an RV. So, in that light, I uh, want to, uh, before it's gone, give everyone a full tour of the Lance and why I think it's such an amazing boondocking camper. Uh, but also anyone who's interested in buying it, if it's not sold yet, then this is your chance to see all the details and condition of our Lance. So without further ado, uh, we're going to take the tour. Uh, there are so many features of this little RV uh, and I'm going to try to get through it without taking forever. So I know it's going to be a long video. I'll try to be concise and get through everything as quickly as I can. So to tour the RV, we're gonna start outside and we're gonna work our way in. Uh, I'm gonna start at the front and point out all the features hope I can remember them all. Um, at the front, the cover houses three five gallon propane tanks. And there's a very cool LED light strip along the front, which is kind of a mood lighting uh, situation. There's also LED lights here, here, and on both sides that light up the front and the light in this. So if you are hooking up or doing anything at night, you can see everything clearly. Uh, I guess we'll work around the, the back side and work our way to the front. Um, there's a nice little uh, hatch uh, where you can keep your sewer line hose right here. Batteries are right here. These are actually brand new batteries, and those are 2021s. Um, so we just put brand new batteries in it. Generator. This is a Cummins 4000 watt generator. Hot water is, hot water heater is behind here. Here's where you can hook up your shore power. Honestly, in all these years, I think we've hooked up shore power like twice. Um, here's kind of a docking station for your, your utilities. This is where you hook up your water line and you can switch from filling the tank to, or to city water. The nice thing is a pressure reducer is built into here. You can just hook up line water and not worry about it. Uh, this one's your gray water, or your black water flush, excuse me. And then this is where you, one of the places you can hook up your uh, um, your spray hose. Uh, you got hot and cold water, and you have a spray hose that you hook up to here, and you can you can spray hot or cold water, wash the dog, whatever you got to do. Um, there's also hookups for your satellite or cable TV in here. Um, down here is, oh, I got them wrong. One of these is the hot water heater, the other is the heater. Um, Anyway, I believe this one's the heater and that one's hot water. Um, in here is a mechanical uh, space. There's nothing you typically do in here, but it's controls for the slide. It's a transfer switch for the power between generator and shore power, stuff like that. Here's where you fill up the fuel for the generator or for your fuel station. Notice while we're coming on uh, along the back, uh, all LED lights, and there's a rear awning that goes over the rear hatch. We're going to show that later. Fuel station is right here. You can turn it on right there, and then you just pull the hose out the pump. You can check your fuel level by pushing this switch. You can see we're just below half a tank. Uh, that means that we have over 15 gallons of fuel still in there just with half a tank. Um, here's kind of a uh, outdoor station on the other side. You can connect in with the TV audio visual uh, system inside. You can charge your phones. You can plug in to the, uh, to the stereo system with your uh, device here. 
Uh, there's also an auxiliary cord, and you could hook up TV out here. There's just plug-ins out here if you have things to plug in. You can plug in right there. Uh, notice outdoor speakers, outdoor lighting. So you have lighting in the back, lighting in the front. You have, and I didn't point out there's lighting on the other side. All the way around there's lights. Down here is the connection for your gas barbecue grill and the hose is on board. Uh, quick disconnect, you can hook up your barbecue grill right there. Um, this storage area uh, does not go all the way through because at the very far side of the battery is the battery box. But it is quite a large thing. You could fit, uh, you could fit three of these um, um, big bins in here if you wanted to. I've never had more than two in here, but um, you could fit three. Um, last thing is another spray port hose. So you can you can hook up the spray port hose on this side also. And okay, so let me point out this awning. So Lance is 22 feet long. The awning is something like 19 feet long. It's as wide as it could possibly fit uh, on here. And in fact, it extends so far, I couldn't extend it all the way because we parked too close to the Socotillo. Um, so it actually goes about a foot further than this. Uh, so it is a huge awning. And I think we have covered very quickly all the outside things. Uh, and now we'll move inside. So now we're inside Lance and I'm going to point out some of the features inside and then I'll get out of the way so you can take a closer look. Uh, but this is our configuration when we're in camper mode. And of course Lance is a toy hauler and so uh, we will convert it and we'll film another uh, uh, segment where you can see this in toy hauler mode. Uh, and also we have what we call patio mode where we put this down level, we slide out our recliner chairs and we have an extended space to, to enjoy. So that's another way we use it. Uh, but uh, real quick, so our kitchen, uh, we plan to leave the everything you see um, that's still here is what we plan to leave when we sell this. So we've got cabinets, we've got storage down here, we've got storage in here, we've got storage under the sink. Uh, we've actually always managed to fit everything we need, all our, all our dishes, pots and pans, everything. We've always, always fit everything we needed in here. So um, we've done good on that. The fridge is good size for a small camper. This, is a, this freezer goes down pretty deep. Uh, there are nice reading lights on all four corners. Uh, the TV can release and pivot all the way out and turn. Um, and so from our two recliner chairs, we can sit and see to perfectly the TV. This is the one change that we have made to Lance. Originally, it came with two of these, uh, these sofas that fold into beds. And our only disagreement was that we were never sitting like facing our TV. And they weren't as comfortable, you know, they're comfortable, but not as much as these recliners are. So we still have the other one that goes on this side, this side, but we have well, preferred to, to use it this way. Um, we love these recliner chairs. Um, there's footrests for them. We keep one footrest in here. Um, you could keep both footrests in here, slide them out onto the back deck, recline your feet. Um, we really do prefer it this way. If we're in toy hauler mode, we're able to take these and slide them up into the hallway and still have a full 12 feet of room for cargo. So uh, this uh, little Lance, 22 feet long, can carry 12 feet, a 12 foot vehicle, or 12 foot, or whatever you want to put in here. Uh, so pretty amazing. And the way that it does that, and we'll show that, but the way this thing converts to carry 12 feet is this kitchen sink actually slides all the way into the bathroom and then everything else in here is removable or folds up. So that's how this little unit converts into a 12 foot cargo area. Okay, so finishing up in here, uh, there, are, there are cabinets, the full length of the RV all the way to the back. Um, there's these nice little trays underneath the cabinets um, and they continue all the way to the door. So it is complete cabinetry all the way from when you walk in all the way to the back. And down in this little cabinet, the stereo system, subwoofer, and there's an amp. The stereo system is, is beautiful on this thing. Um, the speakers are all in the ceiling and then the ones outside.
Okay, so we are in the front of Lance now, and brilliant thing for a small camper, small toy hauler is you have a full, I mean a queen size bed, not a full size bed, but uh, a legitimate queen size bed in here. There are, oh, I want to call them hanging lockers, I like kind of both, but uh, there's hanging space in both sides in here, and drawers in both sides, and a big cabinet above the bed, and a shelf all the way along this side. So. Um, you can take a look at that. Also, when you come in here, your power, kind of your power center, uh, fuses and all that are down here next to the bed. And we have a lot of custom features on this particular Lance. And you'll notice the power button for the inverter is there on the right lower. Um, also a place you can plug in your cell phones and so forth. And the Victron power monitors on the left upper. So that you can connect with a Bluetooth uh, to your phone and you can monitor your battery situation there. On the wall up here, we don't actually have it in here, but you can put a TV up here. All the connections are there if you wanted a TV in the bedroom. So with the inverter on board, everything in the RV can work all the time. Uh, so TV, microwave, I mean, TV is 12 volt anyways, but microwave, you want to run a vacuum cleaner. I mean, you can run anything you want on the inverter, excepting for the air conditioner. Um, for the air conditioner, you do need the generator. Um, also, if you are parked in a forest for a long period of time and it's cloudy and the solar is not producing enough, well, that is about the only other time we've ever needed the generator. But um, I'll show you the generator and how you operate it, just like any other if you've had it. Um, you start with the bottom which is prime, and you give it a couple seconds to prime, then you flip over. Let her start up, and after it runs for a sec, a power will come on, the air conditioner's actually on, so the air conditioning will kick on here in a moment. Um, this panel, while we're looking at it, um, you can turn on the panel, check your fuel gauge, you can check your capacities, uh, batteries fully charged, fresh water is full. Um, there's a little bit in the black water looks like. Um, gray water is empty. Um, so uh, down here you can control lights. These are all exterior lights and these, light, these switches light up so you won't forget if you left them on. And then these are interior lights. Hours on the generator, it's at 176 currently. And you can run your water heater on gas or electric. Um, here's your water pump. Here's your two awnings, the rear and the side. And here's to open and shut the slide out. Right above that is the uh, solar controller for the solar. 360 watts of solar on here. Okay, so in the bathroom, one nice thing is you've got actual porcelain toilet, uh, which is not something you see in RVs too often. Um, so real nice toilet. The shower is legit size. A six foot tall person could easily stand up and shower in there. Uh, so you can have a look at the shower. And lots of storage in here, including in the corner of the wall. I'm going to lay out, now that you've toured through Lance, uh, the reason that I think this is the best boondocking camper you can, you can have. So first of all is the size, 22 feet. As we've traveled around with this Lance, we found that many of the state parks and the national parks, the primitive campgrounds, limit the size of RVs if they allow RVs. And frequently that limit is 22 feet. And so sometimes it's 24 feet, sometimes it's actually less, but usually it's at least 22 feet. So we found that at 22 feet, we can squeeze into almost every campground that allows RVs. And that has made a tremendous difference to our travels. So from a size perspective, I think this is the largest that is practical. If you want to travel around and visit national parks and state parks and, uh, and just local primitive campgrounds and campsites. 
uh, the size uh, just fits in there. The other thing is at this size, nothing else offers the capacities and the capabilities of this little RV. Uh, it is a toy hauler and consequently it has the tanks of a large toy hauler. So you have 100 gallons of water on board, you have 45 gallons of gray water, 45 gallons of black water, you've got the three five gallon propanes, you've got 36 gallons of fuel for the generator or for your toys. Uh, if you're just running a generator, you could run weeks uh, off that much fuel uh, continuously, if you, which I don't know why you would, but you could. Uh, so the ability to stay off grid with the solar, uh, the solar pretty much provides all of our uh, daily power needs as long as the sun's shining, and that carries us through the night, recharges during the day, we run the generator if we need to. We can travel a week comfortably where we shower every day, wash dishes, you name it, and we find that about every week we want to visit a dump to dump our black water and to refill our water. Uh, if we are conservative, we could certainly extend that. So, uh, so yeah, we can fit into most places and we can stay off grid for a long period of time and then combine that with the quality and the amenities of this little camper. You, you can't find anything that's built this well and offers as many amenities. And so the last thing I can say uh, is to point out how reliable this RV has been. Uh, in four years of operation, we've only had two things ever fail on it. And those two things are the refrigerator and a water leak. And the refrigerator was a uh, gas, uh, the gas regulator that had to be replaced in the water leak. The water leak plagued us for a long time, um, trying to track it down to the point where we actually had the entire roof replaced. Um, so this Lance has a new complete roof uh, which didn't turn out to be the problem, but um, it has a new roof. We finally did discover the problem, fix the water leak. There's one drawer in the RV that has some water damage from where the water leaked in, um, and that's just the, the way that is. So in four years, that's it. Any other problems or things on this we have caused or decided to do ourselves. Uh, so it's been a bulletproof thing. We love it. We're really sad to see it go. Vehicle in here. So I'm going to show you uh, how amazing the ground control is on uh, that we have here on the Lance. Uh, notice that I've just disconnected the truck, so this is the height of the hitch. Uh, the computer in here will remember that height and it just takes the touch of a button for the trailer to completely level itself. And keep in mind that front to back and side to side, we're not on level ground here. Um, it's not, I mean, it's not a terrible slope, um, but it's not perfect, but the ground control will, will sort that right out. The front to back matters not at all really with the ground control. You can have a pretty big slope uh, front to back, not a big deal. Side to side, uh, the ground control can only take out a couple inches. So. I do carry these, uh, you know, I know people have fancy levelers, but honestly, I just have these little pieces of cedar um, that I've just had left over from the fence project 
Uh, and I just use those if I need to gain a little elevation on wheels from side to side. Uh, so that, that's my cheap and easy solution for that. But honestly, uh, very rarely have I had to adjust side to side. Uh, usually it's front to back where I got a big difference. And so uh, usually we just pull up and hit the button and away we go. So uh, there is a screen in here. Um, so this tells you, I mean, it'll do voltage and everything else, but one of the sections in here is called leveling. Let's see if we can focus on this or not. Uh, so you can hit leveling. And you can control what's going on. Uh, so um, it's flashing a little warning about the rears right now. I'm not even sure why it's not everything's retracted at the moment, but um, you can retract, extend. Oh, I, I think it's flashing at the rear because if we push this, we're going to extend or retract the rear. Uh, we can also hit the auto level button, uh, which will auto level everything. Now, there's also this like quick, uh, quick uh, connect button here and you activate this by pushing the up and down at the same time um, and then you can just hit the auto level uh, so um, you know and then if you look over here at the screen it's gonna auto level um, so here it goes right now the front is quite a bit higher um, so first thing it did was that um, I think the front jacks yep they'll be the next ones to go So that one hit first. So notice now this one's going to say, okay, this side's lower. So now it's going to go. There we go. Now it's going to probably activate the backs. Nope, nope, take that back. God, it's going to retract the tongue. So at this point, the RV is probably pretty close to level. Um, front to back, and then at least on the front end, side to side. But as soon as this uh, tongue retracts enough, then the backs will kick in. And uh, once the backs get uh, pressure, then it'll actually do a, an actual proper leveling. There, put the front down a little bit. All right, here comes the backs. So notice that one hit first on this one. Um, it's fun interesting on the front, the other side hit first. So that one got pressure, now this one's going to put pressure. Okay, now all four have pressure, now it's going to actually make minor adjustments to get everything exactly perfect. See that's doing the front right up a little bit. Let's see if it does anything else. Nope, a little more on the front. So that front's extended pretty far. Actually, both these, this is the downhill side. So back up a little bit on this side. Now, if we had too much, uh, if we're off too much side to side, um, then this thing could flash a warning at us and say, you know what, it couldn't take out the side to side. But, but honestly, it looks like I think it's going to be fine here. It's plugging away at it. Oh, here it goes a little more back here. A little more back here when this thing gets done man you walk in this thing it is solid like a rock um, super stable super hard floors and I noticed that when we're towing you know the bathroom door doesn't always latch you know that kind of stuff when this thing's leveled bathroom door everything is aligned perfectly everything's perfectly level never screws up so yeah it's finished now uh, the little screen in here is happy uh, with its situation and we can shut that off because I don't even use the screen really most of the time um, you know it's a touch screen so unless something you know unless I really want to do something okay so it's gonna do something there okay um, so yeah there's the ground control uh, she's all level and solid now so I'm gonna run through all the things that I'm including with the uh, Lance um, this is presuming you don't already have a whole, you know, if you're moving for another RV, you might already have all this stuff. 
Um, and I don't know if you really want to talk us down the price or something because I could use all this for our new RV, but uh, but I really want someone to be able to start off, you know, fully set up, ready to go. So I'm planning to include all this stuff. Uh, so I'm going to run through everything that's here. So uh, in this bin, we have the primary power cable for the 30 amp service. I have a backup power cable so you can extend that uh, length out if you're far from the uh, connection. There's a coax cable in here. If you happen to go to an RV park with cable TV, you can hook up to the cable TV. Uh, I've got a complete tool kit um, right here. I think I mentioned the water line. Um, got the, uh, the reducer for the sewer line drain. The uh, spray port hose. I'm going to include that too. And I'll show you it plugs in. I haven't done it in a while. Let's see. Alright, try again. There you go. So spray port hose. Um, you get pretty good pressure out of this. You can wash off stuff, do whatever you need to do. Um, you need to wash all that off anyways. Um, yeah, so this thing works good. Real handy little tool. Um, and it's the quick disconnect. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's there. Another really handy thing. This is the quick disconnect with the propane. So you get a little uh, portable barbecue grill and that screws into your barbecue grill. This guy, same thing right here, quick disconnect, screws on right there, you run your barbecue grill. So got that included. The green hose is the hose I use for the Blackwater flush at an RV dump. Uh, so Blackwater flush hose. And this old red hose is the gray water uh, dump. So because we boondock virtually everywhere we go, the uh, uh, we got the cap on the sewer line that has a thread for a garden hose. I use this old hose to drain gray water. So um, most places it just water a tree or a bush or something uh, with the gray water and that really extends how long you can stay out. And so uh, last thing I'll show you. Sewer hose. It's not the best sewer hose in the world, but it works for me. Contained in here. So you just take this guy and thread it on, stick it in your hole in there. The other side screws on down here. It's all contained and kept out of the way and clean in this hatch. This is the uh, black and gray water flush. Uh, this is what I was talking about with the where you can thread on the hose for draining the liquid waste. Obviously you have to go to an RV dump to drain the black water so that's a uh, valve for each of those. Okay, so that, that does it. Uh, thank you so much for uh, taking the tour. Uh, I think if anyone's in the market for a great little uh, toy hauler uh, or just a camper, but you want your camper to be a great spoon docking camper, we use this most entirely as a camper. We have hauled you know, in it before, but really we've used it mostly as a camper uh, as far as the number of days we've been in it. So it's a great little camper. Uh, you can still find these around. It is a great option. They're super solid little little units. Um, and I'll leave you uh, with some pictures of some of our campsites, just if you're curious. And uh, thank you for watching. Uh, refer to the comments. Uh, we're going to keep putting videos of, our, of everything we do from now on. So you could subscribe to our channel and you could like it and uh, and then keep an eye out for our next videos because we're going to keep uh, uh, posting all of our adventures and our work on our boats and everything else. It's going to be quite a thing. So, um, so stay tuned and uh, stick with us. Before I sleep Hear the crickets, see the moon Side by side and through and through No limit to what we can do Oh, we know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Crazy, but things are finally right